are crazy. Mr. Peter himself, I have been told, has just uploaded his top 25 coasters he's ready. And I don't know about you guys, but um, I'm a little nervous because a lot of people said I was gonna kill him. So we're gonna get up. So we're gonna get right to this. I don't know what to expect. You don't know what to, you actually do know what to expect. You probably already watched it. I'm sh shut up. So yeah, I'm I'm stalling the part two of the storm for this. Screw that. We gotta get this done. This is kind of like a one-time thing. This is an emergency. This is an emergency. I really don't know what to expect from the man. I mean, I mainly, you know, I love Peter, I love his channel and everything, but. Let's be real. I know him from getting info about a 500 foot T-Rex. All right, Peter, let's see what you got in three, two, one, play. Last year, I made a video about my top 25 favorite roller coasters of all time. However, after getting a chance to visit even more parks this year, my list has vastly changed. I finally got around to going to Cedar Point, and I managed to go to a few other notable parks as SV well. SV is number that one. That's said, not even... Keep in mind that there are many parks <laughs> it's it's gonna be number one. What else? What else would it be? Knott's Berry Farm in June, and I may stop by Kennywood and Six Flags Great America as well. But for now, here are my top 25 roller coasters I've ever ridden. Number 25 is Phoenix at Pennsylvania's Knobles and Phoenix Music Resort, a PTC wooden roller coaster. Hey, this ride is I don't everything know. a classic wooden coaster should be. As if Knobles weren't an awesome enough park, this coaster really is the Seems a tad weird, but pretty so. cool. Originally installed at San Antonio's defunct Playland, this coaster was actually relocated to Knobles. This thing was relocated. The fact that it was relocated Man, and still rides I'd... as good as it does just goes to Why did I not know that? care the park gives it. The track is well greased and smooth overall, but Greased. it still has that iconic slight rumble that gives it a classic wooden coaster feel. Perhaps the best part of this coaster for me though was the absence of seat belts. This coaster only mm. has classic buzz bars, which makes the ride's airtime even coaster crazier than it already is. But it it's not. The layout, all the while getting some insane out of your seat moments. Out of all the classic roller uh, coasters I've ridden, this these one things are dragging the my throat. I seriously can't believe it was it's first built in 1948, said, but, but it was. You know, so I highly recommend do what you gotta do. Number 24 is Apollo's Chariot at Virginia's Busch Gardens Williamsburg, a B&M hyper coaster. Um, this was the first B&M hyper coaster to ever open. I, 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 <laughs> um, from what he's written, I'd say that's good, but I don't even know if it should be on there. I consider to be the best setting for a B&M hyper. I don't think Apollo's is better than Phoenix. It really, I don't know. Perfect fit for Busch Gardens Williamsburg, which is well known for its aesthetic magnificence. I'm a sucker for dreamlike settings, and this coaster takes the cake in that department. The ride mm -hmm. itself is an excellent blend of signature. I know Peter. I love your themed rides. Turns and overall enjoyment. As that ain't know, themed I at all, but it has good scenery. Time. On some days, I love it just as much as ejector airtime. In all honesty, for the first B&M Hyper ever to open, it's aged pretty well. Sure, it could use a bit of track work, but sitting towards the left side of the train was significantly smooth. Back row and night really in the summertime with off the mid-course break run is one of the strongest course. moments of airtime I've actually ever felt. Different. Number 23 is Manta at Florida's SeaWorld Orlando, a uh, flying coaster. This is without a doubt the I best don't, I've ridden those two, and I don't think Manta's better than Paul's, but an it's okay. Setting. But it packs quite a punch too. It's pretzel. Um, by the way, I didn't mean like strongest and moments, really period. I meant one of the strongest like Plus, floater. In two yeah, that was probably the strongest floater moment I've ever experienced. Experience. It ejects you, but then you float, Unlike so it's pretty Superman cool Ultimate how Apollo's does that. Just that sucker has nine rows paths. too. Mantis layout takes riders over park paths and through the trees. Not to mention its iconic. It's such a slug at the end. Like, I mean, the pretzel loop's awesome and all, but besides that, it's kind of. No matter how many times I go to SeaWorld Orlando, I can't help but to take photos of this beauty if you love flying coasters you absolutely cannot miss out on this one flying dinosaur is gonna ram it superman krypton coaster at texas six flags uh, uh, coaster. this one is the best hey i could see it i could see it though like i don't know no i could not what am i saying um it looks awesome though definitely a really really awesome coaster incredible drop this coaster takes back row and night rides on that thing will be pretty sweet though one of the tallest in the world while some floorless coasters are smoother than others, this one is by far the slickest of the bunch. Throughout the ride's six inversions, there was absolutely no headbanging to be found, not even on the Cobra Roll. And as a whole, mm, the layout felt just as big.
big and epic as a ride theme to Superman should be. You just go soaring through this layout, and like I've mentioned before, the quarry wall interactions make it even more astounding than it already is. And at night, this coaster is outstanding. Come to think of it, so far I haven't ridden a single Superman coaster that was bad, so I look forward to the ones I haven't ridden. Uh, are you sure about that? <laughs> the beast at Ohio's King's Island, an in-house made wooden roller coaster. <coughs> I'll be honest, I really don't care that this ride is rough at times. If anything, it actually adds- The roughness the don't even matter, dog! The ride is supposed to have. It's- like it's before, just- It's, a lovable it's just a bunch of- Intense drops. That's I'm a sucker beast. for long rides, and the beast does a phenomenal job making the I think it'll be fun. I don't know if it'll be beat Mystic. It could. The moment is the drop after the second chain lift. The one that goes Why? straight into a tunnel. That is a lot more intense than the POVs make it out to be. And as if the ride itself wasn't awesome enough, a night ride is an absolute must. Zooming through the woods. Is that actually a POV like the mist between the of the night ride? Or is that animated? Because if that's an actual one, that's going to be freaking insane. You really have to experience it for yourself. No, it's real. It is the best night ride I've ever had, and I doubt that any coaster will surpass it. Number 20 I threw five, five night rides, dude, front row. I mean, you ever heard of that? <laughs> an aerodynamics hyper coaster. Magnum. This is another coaster that some find to be rough. Some people love it, and some people hate it. I, I don't know. Love it looks fun, sure, like the very ending, but the first half just kind of stupid that first giant airtime hill looks so slow and drawn out i don't know what it'll be like but i've been told it's pretty good so i can't understand why the restraints are going to bother me at all because like i love sky rush restraints so what's magnum is going to be different impossible for me not to love this coaster it's certainly a unique kind of airtime holy crap those dudes were flying out of their seat so it's what the heck? It. It's another coaster that you'd really have to ride for yourself to know what it feels like. They were like, like. There are some pretty <coughs> as you see airtime moments, and the tunnels towards the end make them even crazier. Plus, the long stretching layout over the beach and Alright, I can kind of see why people love Magnum now. That would. Considering why have I never looked at like an off ride kind well, of thing like that? 19 is the new Texas Giant and Texas six Giant. Over Texas. An RMC Ibox coaster. Yeah, that's pretty good. For the first ever RMC hybrid coaster, this ride still manages to hold its own with the company's other major attractions. Sure, it may It's probably the weakest the RMC, or maybe Joker, coasters, I don't know which one, but airtime moments in it's still gonna be awesome. Layout, make it an instant hit in my book. It has a great gut buster of a first drop and a wide array of ejector airtime gut moments. Buster. My favorite moment by far was the 90 degree overbank turn, which gives you the unbeatable sensation of sideways airtime. Moreover, how can you go wrong with those awesome tunnels towards the end? Pretty much the only I mean, bad thing I don't know. I say about this Haven't ridden a pal. Slightly awkward windows on the side. Yeah, the windows. I know that these why? are keep people Just... from sticking their arms out too far, but they did feel a little peculiar. Other than oh, that, yeah. this ride still holds up with the many ah! playlist attractions. <laughs> Number 18 is Montu at Florida's Bush Gardens, Tampa, a B&M inverted coaster. For me, this will always be the crown jewel of the B&M invert family. Every time I've ridden this, yeah, coaster, I think that'll I've be like the best. And insanely satisfying. I think that looks like the best out of what you've had so far, dude. Long sweeping elements makes this a superbly paced thrill ride worthy of its acclaim. Throughout the layout, you'll be treated to a multitude of inversions, including an Immelman, a zero G roll, and my personal favorite, the Batwing. Much of this ride is low to the ground, and oftentimes you'll find yourself diving into Egyptian style trenches, which perfectly fits in with the ride's theming. Oftentimes, you won't see the next element coming, and you'll be whipped upside down. Every element is perfectly. Placed, oh my god, I just looked no at the back row like I was staring at the back row like. Number 17 is Mako at Florida's SeaWorld Orlando, a BM hyper coaster. As I've said before, you can never go wrong with a BM hyper, and Mako easily ranks know, man. my favorites. As of right now, this is the newest hyper coaster to open in the United States. I think that so it's clear to see it could be the best out of what you listed. From the astounding I might be riding this thing next year, like 50. 50 chance send you soaring up and down because i kind of overheard my parents talking about florida or something so like that <laughs> if you're gonna say it say it out loud and say it to me now because i need to know so i can like i need to know breaks can kill the ride's flow 
and despite how short it may feel, it does the most- That airtime looks really good. The section towards the end where you zoom past the gift shop and over the water is especially picturesque. And by the time it's all over, don't Yeah, picturesque, but it's gonna be the weakest part of the ride, though. Number 16 is Cheetah Hunt at Florida's Busch Gardens, Tampa, an Intamin Blitz coaster. Now, some people may disagree with this choice, but I still maintain that Cheetah Hunt is one of the most entertaining and memorable launch coasters I've ever ridden. Ooh, it that first launch looks like something better like than Top Dragsters. Long ride experience packs in a wide array of elements that I can't help but get a kick out of. Its figure eight element is visually stunning. The launches are both fun and forceful, and the zero G roll really does a lot to spice up Oof. the layout. Then there's my favorite section, the slalom turns that take you past the waterfall. These turns provide some excellent laterals and really make you feel like a cheetah maneuvering the natural terrain. Some people consider this to be more of a family coaster, but I certainly disagree. Its fun factor can easily make it just as much fun for adults as it is for kids. Mm. Number 15 is Millennium Force at Ohio Cedar Point, Ooh. an Intamin Giga Coaster. Due to technical difficulties during the trip, I only got to ride this coaster once. But if that I one mean, ride I guess. anything, it's that this coaster it does is look really good. an awesome one. Sure, it may not be as airtime packed as other rides on this list, but Millennium Force still packs enough speed and memory. It just looks weak for a Giga Coaster. I don't know why. It was an astounding first drop. That drop. Flying through the trees and past other Looks park fun. attractions with a layout that mixes enormous airtime hills with thrilling bank turns. While some enthusiasts consider this ride to be forceless, I actually grayed out at the point. Alright, yeah, when people call this completely forceless, I'm like, it can be completely forceless. I mean, around that first turn, there's gotta be some G's there. Um, some of the other G's, maybe near the end. You're going over 90 miles per hour, so there's no way it's, like, completely forceless. Then again, there is fear. Still more than worthy of being one of the park's top coasters. Number 14 is Diamondback at Ohio's oh. Kings Island. A B and M hyper coaster. As far as that's &M hyper interesting, go, this one is hands down my favorite. There's so much to love about this coaster that it's honestly hard keep to keep that track in mind. Of. Not only does it pack the towering airtime hills I know and love from B and M, but the way the ride goes into the forest makes it feel much more it, secluded. Than it the looks so good. This in turn gives Diamondback an excellent night ride, as you can barely see the ride's dips and turns coming at you. Now I have heard some people say this ride has a rattle to it, but I honestly didn't notice it at all. The yeah, I'm not going to notice the rattle most likely because everyone was always like, yeah, Dominator has a completely bad rattle. Then they say it's worse than Diamondbacks. Dominator doesn't have a rattle. I don't feel it at all. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not even trying to be biased. It just doesn't. So if they say that it's worse than Diamondback rattle, then I'm not going to feel a Diamondback rattle at all either. It's going to be buttery smooth for me. Mystic, yeah, one-ups Diamondback. A GCI wooden coaster. On paper, this ride's stats may not seem that groundbreaking, but the actual ride experience is pretty much guaranteed to blow you away. Yeah, GCI Thunderhead's airtime gave me a little teaser of what this thing's whole ride is, so I'm looking forward to this. Thrilling. Throughout the layout, you will encounter ejector airtime moment after ejector airtime yeah, it's gonna be moment, so along much with a fun. tunnel and a trick track type element that tosses riders sideways. Like both Diamondback and the Beast, this coaster takes riders into the woods, also allowing for an insane. That's the good thing about Kings Island's coasters; a lot of them take you back in the woods. I think Bat. Faster than I think Bat kind of goes back there. Pick up that speed um, and keep it throughout the layout. Even the final break run is worth noting, as you'll be. Does Banshee like go back in the woods? It doesn't like go back in the woods. It just like goes out. Back or something. A kind of fantasy horror theme makes it much more memorable. Ah, don't show me what's in the shed. No, I'm just kidding. I've watched that. I've just I've seen what's in the shed like 20 million times. Ah, that's a horrible meme. If you live in the Cincinnati area, you can't miss Mystic Timbers. Yeah. Number 12 is Wicked Cyclone at Massachusetts Ooh. Six Flags, New England. An RMC it definitely I looks incredible. This was the first RMC I've ever I wouldn't say incredible, I actually, but I'd say really, really good. This is so compact that it's a wonder how it feels as long as it does. The drop, despite being barely over 100 feet, is still one of the most intense drops I've experienced, launching you downwards into that first overbank turn. The zero-g stall and both both zero G rolls are smooth and surreal, twisting you through the ride supports like you're in Honestly, the Honestly, this list is not bad. I don't know why people are saying that like as I do, you'll be pleased to know that this ride is chock full of it. This is especially evident during He's not gonna hate Elrod or ride through five that hard. They're at least gonna be top five. Not to mention the outward bank. Like at the least though. 
feel like you're about I imagine as if the right through five actually might come in at number five six at the you know like the least but Elrod's gonna be top four or three maybe resident myself I can safely say that this ride is indeed I mean I, I kind of respect it. I know fury is gonna be like number two SV is gonna be number one. Oh yeah that's right he rode Wonder Woman yeah when this ride was first announced, I had no idea what to expect. Sometimes, Dude, what? I, look more did I, uh, I just watched like the However, back row whip over that ride, first twisted airtime hill awesome right after the dive loop. The I watched, I paid attention to the person in the back row and they like went. <laughs> even better on the water. But besides the ride's appearance, the coaster itself is in the back row on Railblazer at night. I think that's going to be top 15 in the world. Well, maybe not top 15, but top 20. Provides the Maybe. projector airtime we've come to expect from RMC, but its 90 degree drop does a flawless job providing the necessary speed for riders to zoom through the course. And no, this footage is not. Has this dude ridden Railblazer? fast the coaster actually looks. I highly doubt it. serves up a turbocharged experience that you'd be hard pressed to find anywhere else. It's one of those what just happened kind of rides, where the coaster's awesomeness will leave you sitting on the brake run in disbelief. Number 10 is Lightning Rod at Tennessee's Dolly. Oh! Oh. oh! What the? Peter, you better help. You better hope I never find your house. How? How? Dude, I like, I just, I don't know how, like, it's lightning rod, that, <sighs> it's lightning rod. I mean, it's, it's got like the quad down, it's got, it's got a whole bunch of airtime, like a jagged airtime off axis moments, completely insane. How? Keep this with me in case anything else happens, bud. I, I don't know, man. Like, I don't. I just don't see how you could put it that low. And you put an iron, iron rattler, iron rattler for the oh. and fury. Jesus Christ, fury. <laughs> It may be famous for its downtime, but this coaster runs on all four cylinders of fun. Although the pothole after the first drop may have a bit of an oof factor to it, at least one. It, it doesn't. It There's nothing the rough there. As a whole, and by the end, it was just a very minor nitpick. While it's it's smooth. It's like butter. Being butter. Like twisted timber smooth. Plethora of airtime into its crazy layout. My personal favorite. Element exactly. So why is it not harder? Ultra extreme quadruple down. Yes, a quadruple down. Yeah. Ladder, of course, being oh, a quadruple down. Yeah, let's put that at number 10. Experience. And as if that were awesome enough, it's simply astonishing how the engineers and designers incorporated the rights. He, he's talking like it's like the greatest thing ever, and, and he puts it number 10. Dip and twist on the I don't understand. Trees makes it feel like Doctor Strange is morphing space and time around you. It's by far the best terrain coaster. Wouldn't that be like a fourth dimensional coaster or something that would make you feel like that? Sure. Number nine is Intimidator 305. Yep, good night. I'm not doing this. Why? You mean to sit there and tell me Intimidator 305 and number nine? Uh, under Iron Rattler. Iron Rattler. What did you miss? No, I get it. I guess some people don't like intensity or whatever. Back to back. I don't know what I'm mad about more. Like, L Rod number 10, I35 number 9. 
I'm tempted to let this chair fall back and let me hit my head. I'm, I'm gonna get a concussion, but maybe it'll erase my memory from that. And then you got Fury hogging over it. You don't understand. Like, you just... You can't not just... Taylor Bivey even admits Intimidator 305 is better than Iron Rattler. Did you get a bad ride on it? Something go wrong there? With... Wait, wait. Where's Twisted Tech? Nope, I'm out. See ya. Incident Giga Coaster. If you love balls to the wall intensity, exactly balls to the walls. This balls, phenomenal my balls has on the wall. That is exactly what that is. How is that not like like a hat? Airtime hills. This ride focuses more on thrilling. No, 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 no. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear Intimidator 35 doesn't have airtime. No, this thing has at least five moments, and yeah, you can argue. Oh my God, they're tre. No, you have to feel it. You just gotta go. <sighs> and then feel it. It doesn't just come to you. its NASCAR theme, you really feel like you're driving a race car through. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, dude. What are you doing, Peter? More than makes up for in breakneck speed. Though it does feature some this dude's from Chicago. As well. this He's from Chicago. He'll take pizza over this thing. Alone, pizza. But it's not the park's only standout attraction. No, no please. It's Twisted Timbers, also at Virginia's King's Dominion, an RMC Ibox coaster. Although its initial I'm actually out. Was arguably overshadowed by I, Cedar I, Point I, Steel mm. Vengeance, it still manages to hold its own as one of the best coasters I've ever ridden. This I don't think Taylor would even go as far as saying ball. that. Airtime, airtime, <sighs> and even more airtime. I couldn't. Yeah, of course, the intensity. Moments this ride had, and it cemented my belief it's that not, never have enough air time. Not it is nowhere near the insanity I think 5 pulls. I don't, I mean, I know there's people who think this, but come on. Intimidator 305 front row at night versus like Twisted Timbers back row in the morning. I threw 5 still crushes it. I'm sorry. Much like Mystic Timbers, the ride Sorry, is what? packing a story of its own as well. This time centered on an extraterrestrial apple orchard. If that isn't unique, I don't know what is. What I do know is that you should check out this ride as The three back-to-back -back -back hills are awesome. The drop is great. Everything else is just fun. Sky Rush at Pennsylvania's Hershey Park and Intamin Wing. I respect that. Speaking of airtime, what a Over I through five though and Elrod arguably infamous restraint. Not by a lot, but I still don't think it's better. On this I, I see where you're coming from. From, though. I was left breathless at how it is. Why are you wearing a Mystic Timber shirt on that man? Be as terrifying as it was. Gotta represent After your country. It's countless Chicago. Time moments and stomach lifting drops. I was instantly enamored by this ride. It's yet another example of how you don't need inversion. It's definitely not better than I through five, but it came close to Elrod. Roller coaster that's said to have the most intense air time on Earth. Yes, it does. It Sky Rush does own up to the most intense air time on Earth. To its riders, From what I've been told, and I mean, hey, I can, I'm allowed to say that because people who have ridden like the most elite of the elites say that Elrod and Skyrush have the most intense. But that and I've ridden both of them, so I guess I can say oh, Skyrush has the most the intense airtime out there. Way more than made up for it. Number six is Superman the Ride at Massachusetts Six Flags New England, an Intamin mega coaster. Intamin strikes yet again with another. We're back to the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> Like Skyrush, it does have restraints that many enthusiasts dislike. I'm not even gonna care about the restraints. If it's anything like Skyrush restraints, I'm gonna love it. I'm cool with them. I'm gonna love it. Superman themed mega coasters at Six Flags America and Darien Lake. This one has a vastly different layout. Not only does it have the pure excitement of an out and back hyper coaster, but it also packs in an electrifying twister. Look, look how slow it's going at the end. You really think a slug like that beats out a 90 mile per hour snap back, make you gray out, black out, have no idea where you are, friggin' intimate get out. rocks and rolls from start to finish. After an incredible view of I, I think there's like one out of 99% of people would agree that Superman doesn't really come close to I-35 at all. I've been ridden it, but it's common sense. Like, it's a common sense type thing, you know what I'm saying? This isn't the kind of ride you can I feel like I-35 didn't take you. I feel like it didn't possess you enough. 
Number five is Iron Rattler at Jesus Texas Christ. There it is. Flags. Oh my God. No. An RMC Ibox coaster. For several years, I have heard nothing but great things about this ride. I've seen the people. It is. I've read the online reviews. So and I went on expecting the best. But even still, I managed to have my expectations. Exceeded. Everyone talks about how it has like airtime up there with like right Elrod. The bat, you've got a no. It has like four or five moments, and, and they're not even that great. The From what I've heard, they're still good. Now, that off there, the jump off the court. Very well, See, um, the, the second part this of it well definitely looks like a good airtime moment, but everything else is just kind of eh. It's so short and like, like the, the quarry wall section is slow. Is I've just heard it's completely ride. overrated, but still really good. Play during the ride's midway point, when an upward zero G roll takes you to the top of it. This zero G roll, by the way, is my favorite one so far. Even after ascending the wall, you still maintain enough speed to maneuver a few airtime bumps. Before Why is Kumba not on here? Then going through the wall. What? Yes, a tunnel through the limestone wall. How incredible is that? I can't recommend this ride enough. You've got to check it out. Number four is Maverick at Ohio Cedar Point, an Intamin Blitz coaster. This is without a doubt the best launch coaster I've ever ridden. Not because of the launches themselves, but the way those launches play their role in the ride's overall layout. Starting off with an LSM lift, mm, you're immediately no, just, whipped into the layout via a beyond just vertical. Thinking about that over drop. And let me tell you, when you're in the back row, over lightning ride over this drop. Don't let its relatively short height fool you. This coaster's intensity is flat out. This is a prank. This has got to be a prank. It really does have something for everyone. It has multiple launches, a beyond vertical drop, laterals cranked up to 11, amazing. I respect your opinions, but to all off, a wonderfully insane I totally respect your opinions and stuff. Like best inversions I've ever experienced. Moreover, its but final launch is without a doubt the most intense LSM launch I've ever over Elrond and I throw five. That's kind of that go over the water. There is no reason to pass up on this attraction. It's that great. I don't see now it. Now we've come to the top three. El Toro three. That's a good spot. Toro at New Jersey. I, it's it's over Fury, but um, it challenges SV. SV challenges it. They're both. Many times I great. ride it, and no matter how many bumps the track may have every now and then, I don't yeah. think I'll ever find a wooden coaster bumps? better than I don't... this one. When it comes I've to heard it's like pretty smooth, completely on those. Of the drops is unquestionable. Whoa, those hills aren't as pointy as I thought they looked. What the heck? El Toro sends you plumbing over that steep 76 degree yeah, what? drop. The first half of this ride will treat you to those not that pointy, wow. Tunnels and head chopper effects, while the second half will finish things off with an amazing twister section. I still uh, it doesn't look amazing, riding, but it's enough to put this thing top five in the world. How amazing it was. I'd never seen anything so intense in my life. Even on its occasional yeah. long days, I love the wooden coaster. Then you walked up to your number nine Intamin Giga. And for something as intense as it is, it's running very smoothly for the most part. It's hard to keep a wooden coaster as big as this one operational and enjoyable. But the fine folks at Six Flags... But it's like not even that old. ...all the credit in the world for keeping El Toro as good as it is. Here's to many more years of operation. I mean, heck, the Koreans wanted to bomb us and they're taking care of T-Express perfectly, so why wouldn't they take care of El Toro? Giga Coaster. I like to consider this as B&M's Magnum opus the supreme king of their installations the creme de la creme Fury what the is by all means an icon and the so what I could sit here all day and list all the reasons this coaster is awesome but i'll try to be brief the first drop is just Fast. as insane as it looks sending right forceful for what big like ages long level out tall it may not have inversions yeah. but it's still stats not memorable freaking features like make it the delight that it intensity is. no no don't even try and tell me that's more intense than i threw by don't you do not top. tell me All that's more intense. No. Some astounding airtime moments in a cornucopia. Of astounding? Lines. No, I read that thing three <laughs> times: front row, back row, and second to back, and I remember it clearly. Like that was not astounding airtime. It was the okay. Videos don't do this right justice. You really need to experience it to truly. Not POVs do do it justice. It just shows it's big. Spectacle. Theory so. Three two five is a masterpiece. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. Come to number one, and it's Steel Vengeance. That's fine. I I can see it perfectly, actually. From the moment I first saw the POV for this coaster, I knew I was in for something special. But saying this coaster lived up to the hype is a gross understatement. Steel Vengeance not only... This is what I'm scared for. This is what I'm scared... So many people have 
overhyped this thing for me. They've hyped this thing up so hard, telling me it rams every single coaster out there extremely hard, like way more than I would have ever thought, apparently. And I'm scared. I'm scared now that I'm not going to like it as much. Because I have this mindset now. I mean, you guys got me. About a month ago, you guys got me completely on the on the train for it. You know, the hype train. So, I'm here now. I'm with you guys. I think this is going to be one of the best, maybe the best. But that's why I'm scared. I, I overrated this thing. Now, I mean, I can't say overrated, but like overhyped so hard that I'm scared. I might not even like it over rides like Skyrush, Elrod, you know. The most I threw five. On any coaster I've ever ridden, I waited almost three hours to ride this, and for the first time ever, I can safely say that a wait that long was worth it. Steve now, Intimidator threw a five is a wait that's worth it. Her front row at night, especially. Like uh, longest I waited was about two and a half hours. Last time I went, um, I had to wait for someone uh, to ride with me in front row at night, so it took about 20, 30 minutes actually. She would not like respond so it was i was sitting there like get me on the freaking ride but um yeah i i only waited for about an hour 15 for that one so i threw fives worth the night rides for sure but peter dude you're awesome you're one of the you're one of the best coaster channels great dude whack opinions um i I now see why people were constantly spamming me to get on the frickin' T TPC game to watch this. <sighs> I can't even breathe. <laughs> oh, that just, that just hurts seeing Maverick over things like I threw five Elrod. Sky Rush. <sighs> I mean, the Fury thing. You and Taylor have the exact same top two right now. One SV and two Fury. Do not tell me... You cannot tell me that Taylor's new top 25 is going to be different than that. Oh, well... M m maybe number two is going to be Karen... No. No. We all know that freaking it's gonna be SV number one, two, Fury. In my opinion, is a horrible one-two punch for the greatest coasters out there. SV number one, now I can see that combined with some coasters for the one-two punch like Skyrush, I through five, DC Rivals, um, Voyage, maybe Karanon, G4, you know, things like that. But Fury, it's overrated, incredibly overrated. Iron Rattler, what are you doing up there? You're like crazy high. I don't know. I was loving the list up to the top 10, which, wow. I don't know. It was all right, though. It was not bad. It was just weird. And yeah, I completely respect the opinions, okay? I, I don't, I'm, I haven't ridden over half of those, so I can't really say much. But out of the ones that I did ride, like, Sky over I through five, I don't think so. Um, Elrod and I through five that low, I also don't think so. Um, Fury that high, and over every other coaster that I've ridden on there, no, not at all. Um, but it's all right, you know. Uh, this dude is very high quality, so his opinion is definitely very valuable to us. Um, so Peter, I mean, it was cool watching your top twenty-five. I mean, I just, I'm sorry, I freaked out a little. That was just to me. From what I've heard and what I know, out of knowledge, is that a vein? Oh my god. That's a vein. But, uh, yeah. Overall, wasn't terrible. It was just shocking. Um, I don't know. I, I don't have anything else to say. I just need to, I just need to go take a break or do something else for now. Um, yeah, I just had to react to this because you guys got me to, so I don't really have much else to say. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's theme park crazy. Ah, see what I did there? Yeah, I need to go. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>